So in the previous part, we had a look at what is inter-process communication and how this works in our microservices project. So we have our order service calling the inventory service through the web client class and we are making a call uh, to the inventory service at the location at the URL localhost 8082 slash API slash inventory, right? So let's also look at this here. So we are making a call directly to the inventory service by hard coding the URL. So the problem here now is this works as we are running is in our local machines, right? But usually in the microservices environment, everything will be deployed on a cloud environment. And in a cloud environment, we cannot have dedicated IP addresses, right? Everything will be dynamic. We will have dynamic IP addresses and we can it will run on maybe different ports. Usually it, the microservices runs on port 8080, but it can run on different ports, right? We cannot make any assumption that uh, inventory service will be available in this, in this IP address, right? Uh, in addition to that, we can have multiple instances of the given microservice like in this diagram we can have multiple instances of the inventory service and each instance can have a dynamic ip address for example we can have 10.120.23.1 23.2 and 23.3 now in this instance how our order service will know which instance of the inventory service we have to call right it cannot understand which instance we have to call even though we try to hard code one instance uh, IP address of the one instance it can this instance can go down anytime right it can it can be um, stopped and shut down anytime and uh, we have to make a call to the other instances so how do our order service understand which inventory service we have to call right so for this reason there is a pattern called as service discovery pattern and we are going to discuss this in detail in this video. So the service discovery pattern is nothing but creating a server, something called as a discovery server, which will store all the information about the services, right? The service name and as well as the IP addresses, like you see in this particular um, table, right? A discovery server is nothing but a place where it stores all the information about the services. When we are using the discovery server, what our microservices will do is it will they will first try to register at the time of starting up the application they will try to register with the discovery server by making a request right whenever the um, services are making the request it will add the discovery server will add the entries of these services into its um, into its local copy we call it as a registry so that's why it's also called as a service registry once the, all this information is uh, is present in the discovery server when our order service wants to call the inventory service so let's see how the communication will happen here in this diagram when the order service wants to call the inventory service the order service will first make a call to the discovery server asking where i can find the inventory service and then the discovery server will respond with like particular ip address to call the inventory service in this particular ip address and then the order service will make the call to the inventory service in this way, we can avoid hard coding the URL of the inventory service by making use of the discovery server. How we can do that exactly? We will have a look at it later, but um, this is what you need to know to understand the service discovery process, right? And another thing which you have to know is when making the initial call to the discovery server, what the discovery server will do is it will also send its registry as the response to the client. Right. So what the client will do is it will store also the local copy of the discovery server in a separate location. So if for some reason the discovery server is not available, it will first check the local copy, right? Because as it already has information about the inventory service, it will check the local copy and we will make a call to 10.12.123.1, which is the inventory service. So what happens if this 10.12. If the first instance of the inventory service is not available, right? It will try to check the next entry in the local copy so, so it will make a call to 10.12.123.2 so likewise it will go through all the entries of its own registry and if all the instances are down then it will fail the communication saying that the inventory service is not available so we are going to see all this theory in practice so now let's go ahead and create the discovery server all right so the first thing i'm going to do inside our project is to create a new maven module called as discovery server so for that i'm just going to right click on our root project and going to new module and in here i'm going to select the maven module and just click on next and i'm going to give the name as discovery 
server right and I'm going to click on finish and let's just check the artifact coordinates we have the group ID as com programming techie artifact ID as discovery server right and let's click on finish click on add and you can see that a new module maven module is added discovery server and if I check the root pom xml file the discovery server is also added as one of the modules of the root pom xml so the next thing we have to do is we have to add the necessary dependencies to make this a discovery server and to be able to create the discovery server we are going to make use of the library netflix eureka so let me open the spring cloud documentation and in here if i scroll down until i find the spring cloud spring cloud netflix project you can see that we have a module for service discovery called as a eureka server so we can make use of this Spring Cloud Netflix Eureka server in our project to enable the discovery server capabilities. So for that, I'm going to, uh, so for that, I need to add some necessary dependencies in our discovery server project. So for that, I'm going to make use of star.spring.io website. Here we have the good option to explore the repositories after we added the dependency and we can just make use of the dependency information which is displayed here so let me close this and first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a dependency called as eureka server so this would be the spring cloud netflix eureka server i'm going to add this dependency and i'm going to click on explore and i'm going to scroll down and you can see that we have the dependency spring cloud starter netflix eureka server right I'm going to copy this particular dependency and open my IDE and under the pom.xml of the discovery server I'm going to add the dependencies tag and I'm going to paste in the spring cloud starter Netflix Eureka server dependency right the one thing you can observe here is this is coming from spring framework dot cloud but not org spring framework dot boot right so for this reason as this is coming from a different group ID, we have to add some additional information to our pom.xml. So if I go back to the star.spring.io website and just scroll down until I find the dependency management section, here we have the dependency management section, the BOM version of the Spring Cloud dependencies, right? So I'm going to copy this information, the dependency information. I'm not going to copy the dependencies. I'm just going to copy the dependency information and I'm going to open my pom.xml here the root pom.xml because i'm already maintaining the necessary information for test containers inside this dependency management i'm also going to add spring cloud dependencies to the dependency management section and here i also need to add the spring cloud version so for the spring cloud version i'm going to add a property here under the property stack called as spring cloud version and this spring cloud version this is going to be 2021.0.2 as of creating this tutorial. So I'm going to use the same version here. And I'm going to click on this Maven icon so that the necessary dependencies will be downloaded to my local machine. And you can see that the red text is gone and uh, that means the dependency is downloaded successfully to our machine. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open source main Java app and I'm going to right click and create a package called as com programming dot techie discovery server and make sure you don't add any dash or hyphen here inside the package name or else the IntelliJ won't recognize this as a Java package. So after that I'm going to create a new class called as discovery server application and this is going to be a normal spring boot application so i'm going to add at spring boot application annotation and we're going to have a public static void main method so i'm going to create this method here and inside this method i'm going to copy the existing text which is spring application dot run and here instead of the inventory service application I'm going to call it as discovery server application dot class and I'm going to pass in the command line arguments to the run method alright so now we have the basic discovery server application 
to make it a Eureka server, Eureka discovery server, all we have to do is we have to add enable Eureka server annotation on top of this class. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create the discovery server. Apart from this, you also need to add the application.properties. In the application.properties, you need to add some couple of properties. So for that, I'm going to go to the resources folder, click on new, file application.properties. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define Eureka dot instance dot host name. This is going to be localhost. And uh, I'm going to type in Eureka dot it's going to be Eureka dot client dot register with Eureka as false. Because as this is a discovery server, we don't want to register with Eureka, right? Because this is a discovery server itself. We don't want the server to register itself as a client, right? As this is a server, we don't need to register as a client. And uh, that's why we set it as false. And the next thing is Eureka dot client dot fetch registry is also going to be false. Again, because as this is a server, we don't need to fetch the registry of the server because it's already maintains its registry locally. So whenever the client tries to register to the discovery server, the discovery server will send the local copy of its uh, of its registry, right? The, the client will store the registry in memory in its own storage. So usually when we are defining the client, we will set the Eureka client fetch registry as true by default. As we are configuring a server, we have to set it by as false. Uh, manually and the last thing uh, we have to do is we have to define the port which the uh, on which the discovery server is running so we are going to define it as server dot port is equals to 8761 right so this is the default port where the Eureka server will run so that's why I have provided the port as 8761 so now let's go back to the discovery server application and try to run this discovery server and uh, I, let's see if it's able to start up without any errors. And you can see that in the logs that the we have started the Eureka server and the discovery server application is up and running in three seconds, right? So the next thing we have to do is we have to define the Eureka clients. So we have the discovery server we have to define the Eureka client. So we have three applications, the inventory service, the order service, and the product service, right? So I'm going to open each one of these services one by one, and I'm going to add the dependency for the Eureka clients starter, right? So for that, I'm just going to go to the pom.xml and just copy this dependency because I just wanted to, don't want to type this one more time. And I'm going to paste this dependency inside the pom.xml and I'm going to replace the text Eureka server with Eureka client, right? And uh, the version, we are going to put it directly from the parent pom. So all I have to do is load the Maven changes and it's trying, now it's trying to download the dependencies from uh, the Maven repository and you can see that the red text turned to white. That means Maven is able to download the Eureka client starter dependency successfully. Now I can copy this dependency one more time and paste it inside the order service and as well as the product service. So let's do that. I've pasted it inside the order service and let's open the pro product service now. And I'm going to again paste this information here. So once the dependency is added, we have to add an annotation on top of each application class of our clients. So I'm going to open the main application class where we have the Spring Boot application annotation. Just below this annotation, I'm going to add enable Eureka client annotation. Similarly, I'm also going to add this annotation also for the order service application class. Enable Eureka client. Let's also open the product service application. 
and I'm going to add uh, the uh, enable Eureka client annotation also here. And now we need to add some configuration in our application.properties file regarding the Eureka client, right? Because as these are Eureka clients, we have to add the properties of the Eureka server. We have to provide the information where we can find the Eureka server. So inside the application.properties of the inventory service, I'm going to just add these Eureka dot client dot service url dot default zone equals http local host eight seven eight seven six one slash eureka right so this is going to be the url of the eureka server so we have to provide it as the default service url default zone so that our clients can find the eureka server right i'm going to copy this property again to the order service application.properties file and also inside the product service application.properties file so once this is done i'm going to restart all the services so i'm going to open the inventory service application i'm going to restart the application one and also for the order service application i'm going to restart it and finally i'm going to open the product service application and i'm also going to start the product service application so meanwhile let's see whether the inventory service application is up and running or not and we can see that our application is up and running at port 8082 and in here you can see that our inventory service application is acting as a discovery client and it's trying to call the discovery server right so you can see the log getting all instance registry entry information from the eureka server the response status is 200 that means our our discovery our client that's the inventory service application made request to the discovery server and fetch all the registry at the time of startup right and uh, let's see also it's the same for order service application yes it's the same and also for the product service application it's not yet done because we just restarted it because we just started the application but in some time it should also start it to it should also make a call to the discovery server and fetch all the information about the registry you can also check the status of our services in a separate eureka dashboard 8761 8761 here we can see that we are greeted with a dashboard from spring eureka here we have the environment as test and the data center as a default and we have some metadata like the current type and current time and how much time and the uptime and uh, the the renewal threshold and the renews how many times it has renewed and here you can see that we have the application as unknown right here we the eureka server identified three instances of application but it has the application name as unknown. This is because uh, we did not define any unique name for our applications, for our order service, the inventory service, and the product service. So that's why Eureka server, our Eureka server is not able to provide any names here. So to be able to fix that, we are going to open the, I'm going to open the application.properties file and I'm going to add one more property here called as spring dot application dot name equals product service. So this is going to be inventory service, right? So it should be inventory service. And similarly, I'm also, I'm going to copy this property and open the properties file of order service. And I'm going to name it as order service instead of inventory service and let's open the property file of product service and name this as product service so after making these changes let's restart the application so i'm going to restart the product service application i'm going to restart the order service i'm also going to restart the inventory service so let's see if we are able to see the service name inside the Eureka dashboard. So all the services are restarted successfully. So I'm going to go back to the Eureka dashboard and I'm going to refresh this one more time. And voila, you can see the inventory, the application names, the inventory service, order service, and the product service. And as I have the Docker environment configured, so that's why we have the host Docker internal, the host name is, is resolved to has 
host docker internal so that's not a problem now as we saw in the theoretical example what i'm going to do is i'm going to create multiple instances of the inventory service okay so to do that i'm going to open intellij and first of all instead of running the inventory service on port 8082 if i want to run multiple instances i don't want to hard code the port number right i want to run the inventory service on a random port so for this reason i'm going to provide the service dot port value as zero so what spring boot will do is at the time of starting up it will pick one random free port in your machine and it will run the inventory service application on that port right so in this way no matter how many services we run it's not a problem like it will try to take a free port and will run the application so i've changed this to port zero and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inventory service application from the drop down in IntelliJ and I'm going to click on this inventory service application one more time and click on edit configurations and inside the edit configurations I'm going to select this option allow parallel run so what this will do is it will allow us IntelliJ will allow us to run multiple instances of the inventory service application right so I'm going to click on apply click on OK and now I'm going to go to the inventory service application, click on the green button here and click on debug. So now another instance of the inventory service application will be up and running. And uh, you can see that it is running on port. Um, you can find the port somewhere here. So it's running on the port 62170, right? Previously, it was running on port 828082. Now, this new instance is running on port 62170, right? Let's go to our Eureka dashboard and refresh to check the two instances. And there you, there you can see inventory service, two availability zones. The first one is the service running on 8082 and other one is running on port 0 right in this way we can display all the instance information in the Eureka service dashboard all right so now I'm going to open the order service and uh, here you can see that we are still using the hard-coded version of the inventory service details so now I'm going to replace this localhost 8082 with the name of the inventory service application so it's going to be inventory hyphen service right so i've replaced this with the inventory service now let's restart our order service application so i'm going to go to the services right click and rerun okay so the order service is restarted successfully now let's check whether this order service is configured in eureka or not so you can see that the order service is still configured in eureka and i'm going to open the postman client Usually you have to, I suggest you to wait for 30 seconds whenever you have restarted the service because it takes some time for the client to register itself in the Eureka server. So that's the reason you, I usually recommend to wait for 30 seconds before you start to interact with the service. Okay. So now I'm going to open the Postman client and I'm going to send a request to place an order to the order service. Let's click on the send button and you can see that we are getting a 500 internal server error. So let's open the order service and see what is the error here. It says that failed to resolve inventory service after nine queries. This is because we have multiple versions of the inventory service, right? So remember in the theory session, we have multiple instances. Our discovery server will register all the instances and will respond with this particular information whenever our whenever order service requests for the inventory service so in our order service all this information about the inventory service right it has three instances of the inventory service so now it's not understanding it's confused which instance to call so in this instance what it should do is it should go through this list one by one and it try, should try to call the instances one by one so to be able to enable this feature we have to enable the client side load balancing in our Eureka clients. So to enable the client side load balancing, what we have to do is we have to add an annotation when constructing the web client, when constructing the web client pin, right? So for that, I'm going to open the config package and I'm going to open the 
web client config class and here instead of creating the bean for web client what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a bean for web client dot builder i'm going to remove the dot build method here and just below the bean annotation i'm going to add the load balanced annotation from spring cloud client load balancer package and uh, what this will do is it will add the load balancing client side load balancing capabilities to the web client builder whenever you are creating an instance of web client using this web client builder it will automatically create the it will automatically create the client side load balancer and it will use this client side load balancing to call the inventory service so in this way even though our order service finds multiple instances of the inventory service like this example it won't be confused and it will just try to call this inventory service one after another right so let's go back to our web client config class i'm going to change this web client name to web client builder and i'm going to open the order service and change the declaration of web client to web client builder and the reference variable name to web client builder and now i also have to adapt this web client reference variable name to web client builder dot build so that we will get instance of web client and that's all we need to do so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to restart the order service application rerun in debug mode so once the application is restarted i'm again going to wait for some time for 30 seconds before starting to make the request one more time so now i'm going to open the postman client send the request one more time and now you can see that the order is placed successfully that means our order service is able to successfully load balance the inventory service instances and made a call to the inventory service in this way we can use eureka server and eureka client to implement the service discovery pattern okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to do some disruptive tests like we try to break some things and test how our system will behave right we will try to take down the discovery server so what we are going to do is we are going to try to take down the discovery server that means i'm going to stop the discovery server and see how our applications and how our services are going to behave right so i'm going to open first the Eureka dashboard you see that it is working fine so it's up and running and I'm going to open IntelliJ go to services and I'm going to stop the discovery server application right so let's open the browser one more time and restart localhost 8761 site one portal one more time and you can see that now the discovery server is down right so now let's test whether our order service is still able to find the inventory service or not right so i'm going to click on send one more time and you can see that our order is placed successfully because if you remember as part of the theory session we discussed that while trying to make a call to the discovery server the client will store a local copy of the registry inside the local copy of order service we have the inventory service information right the inventory service is running with port 8082 and it's also running with port 62170 so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop these both instances of the inventory service so i have stopped this instance and i'm also going to stop the inventory service running on 62170 so again this instance is stopped now i'm going to start this instance one more time the instance of the inventory service application and now it should run on a different port than 62170 yeah so it's running on 64432 but it's not able to register it's not able to find the discovery server so that's why we are receiving some errors right like transport exception error so now let's see how our order service will behave right i'm going to send the request one more time and you can see that now we are getting the 500 error so i'm going to open the order service application logs and you can see that we are getting again the transport exception because the order service first tried to check for the inventory service in its local copy and it's not able to reach any of the services right so what it did is trying to again contact the discovery server to fetch the registry information but it found out that the discovery server is not running and that's why it's throwing an error right so now what i'm going to do is again 
go back to the discovery server application and I'm going to run this discovery server one more time. So now our discovery server application is up and running. I'm going to go back to the portal one more time, localhost 8761. I'm going to refresh. And now you can see that the, the dashboard is up and running, but still the services are not registered in the discovery server. So we have to wait for 30 seconds until the services send the next heartbeat to the Eureka server. So let's wait. Yeah, so after waiting for 30 seconds, you can see that our inventory service, order service and product service are back up one more time. And now I'm going to open the Postman client and I'm going to click on the send button. And now you can see that the order is placed successfully. So you can see that even though we have taken down the we have taken down the discovery server, the order service is able to call the inventory service because it has stored the local copy of the registry. So this is it for the inventory service. So in the next video, in the next part, we're going to discuss about the next component of the Spring Cloud service, that is the API Gateway. Right? I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.